Okay, here are four common mistakes that beginners typically make when they are starting to learn a Muay Thai kick. And what are these four mistakes that we typically learn? So make sure you guys stay tuned. So we're gonna, we're gonna break down each one of them in just a second. So here are a few mistakes that beginners tend to make when they're first learning Muay Thai kick. Number one is a distance. Did you ever realize that when we start first uh, kicking the, the pad, some people will start with this, and all of a sudden when they kick, the body thing is over like so. So we want to make sure we're keeping the correct distance. My measurement is I'm standing a, a further away where my lead hand can reach out to the pad. So that way, it saves up my distance. But I'm not so close to the pad when I kick, I'm actually kicking with my high, higher knee and lower uh, middle shin. So I want to make sure when I kick, I don't land up right here. So first, stand your stance. Make sure you have a good distance point. If I'm here, instead of stepping forward, I'm just gonna learn how to lift and pivot and then now I can do my first kick. So that's a distancing portion. So touch, then kick. Touch and kick. So that's the first thing. Make sure I'm not too close so when I kick, it's not end up being my knee instead of my shin, okay? So that's gonna be number one. Oh, and don't forget, if you have questions about how to improve your Muay Thai round kick, I've actually made a video before about how to improve that. So make sure you guys click the link right here to check that video out. And number two is gonna be kicking with the wrong part of your foot. Um, so there's an argument people will be kicking with the lower part of the shin, the middle part of the shin, and the higher part of the shin, which is close to the knee. And all that is correct depending on the use of your technique. But one thing you don't want to do, especially in Muay Thai, is be kicking with the foot like so. Because one is, if I'm actually striking with my foot like this, in the event where people block or they, when, they, when they check, you could end up fracturing your foot. Or maybe, you know, when you kick them too hard, you might break your toes. So you really want to make sure that if I'm kicking the pad like this or heavy back, I want to make sure I'm hitting at least with the lower shin to the middle shin. You can of course strike with the higher shin, which is like close to your knee. Sometimes I call that knee kick. But in general, you want to be kicking lower part of your shin to make that contact. And you want to make sure you're not flashing your toe like this when you kick. Otherwise, when you kick, you're going to end up kicking with the toe like that. So, number one, just relax your foot. So whenever you kick, just relax and learn how, really how to pivot. Your hip has to be driving forward instead of driving upwards like so, okay? So this is going to bring out to the mistake number three. A lot of times when I watch people doing the Thai kick, they're kicking upwards. And especially when the holder is holding a pad like this, it allows them to go upwards instead of driving the kick into their ribs. So if I'm holding the pad, I want, them, I want my palm to drive the shin into my ribs versus I'm holding the pad flat like this, they're gonna be kicking up. So sometimes when I'm on a pad like this, you'll see people kick up like so. See my foot is going upwards. This is gonna look slightly awkward because I'm not hitting anything unless the target is right here. If a target hits right here, yes, I'll be kicking upwards. But if a target is standing in front of me, I actually want my hip to rotate forward the same time I turn my hip in. And that's gonna show, that's gonna cause my shin to go forward and spike through versus going up like that. So when you're learning the kick, you wanna make sure one, you have a good distancing. Number two, you have a correct target of a strike. Number three, you really wanna think about driving your hip in a straight motion like this. So if you guys see my hip, I want my hip to go forward like that. So in a side angle, boom, and I come back. Make sure when I keep up hip, my hands up and when I rotate, I want my, my hip to turn all the way in and then come back. You can do this, but then you gotta be hitting with the wrong part of the foot. So you really want to drive it forward and then come back. If you, if you feel like your distance is too close, then you step back and you come back like so. So every time when you kick, you want to be driving forward and come back. Drive it forward and you come back. So in one motion, it's gonna look like this. And come back. Touch, and come back. Touch, and come back. Every time we kick, breathe out, relax, and then come back. Again, come back, okay? And last one, number four, do not snap too hard. Sometimes when we first learn to kick, I'll see this, snap. Um, in some case of system of study, it is not incorrect, right? So, when I used to do Taekwondo, we used to do this, right? But at least for Muay Thai, you don't want to snap your leg in the air too long because the longer you leave your foot in the air, the, the more of a chance you're giving your opponent to counter you. So instead of snapping like so, I want to think about a whip. I want to be whipping my foot forward and then bring it straight back down. So I'm gonna engage my hip when it comes in like this. When I disengage my hip, I let it drop straight back down. So in the front angle, when I kick, land it back down. 
Try not to bring your foot all the way across and all the way back like that. I'm gonna bring my foot all the way, like, I'm gonna bring my feet in a very narrow stance. See my kick? My kick actually comes from this angle, not this. Don't swing and then come back. See that big motion right here? Try not to do that, okay? So I'm gonna keep my body narrow. My kick's gonna come out like a knee. In the very last second, I roll to my hip. So now my foot can come through as a whip. As soon as I finish with a kick, I'm gonna let my hip drop straight down so it comes in a straight line. Versus, I swing, I snap, and I bring it back like this. That's gonna cause the delay of your kick, and the landing of your timing is gonna be slow. So, in one motion, kick, bring it back now. And use that momentum, boom, to, dis to disengage your hip. So I kick, boom, disengage. I kick, disengage. I kick, I disengage. Versus, I swing, snap, bring it back down. Now it's gonna be a lot slower. So these are the four tips I'm gonna give you out today. Remember, number one, don't be too close to the target. Always have a good measurement of your target. One jab, one kick. One jab, one kick. That's gonna help you to measure distance in the beginning. Number two, make sure you're not striking with the foot, okay? You can use any part of your shin, but in the beginning, I recommend using the lower part to the middle part of your shin. Number three, make sure you're using your body and the hip to kick forward versus kicking upwards, okay? So instead of going up like so, make sure you really rotate the body and the hip. I want my hip to rotate in, so when I kick, it gives a nice angle and projection. And lastly, you wanna make sure you're not snapping. Let your hip become a whip. More hip, more power. If you don't rotate your hip, sometimes you can just do a low kick and chop, but for now, at least in the beginning, you have to study how your hip rotates. So in the slow motion, really try to rotate and stay tall. Boom, and then come back. You can swing your hand backwards like this. I always taught to block the center line with the hand so they can't punch and counter your, in your kick. So you can go one, then come back. Rotate the hip, bam, come back. Rotate the hip, and come back, okay? So these are the four common mistakes that people typically make. Give yourself a little nice, nice check to see if you make either one of them. If you do, take a step back and really try to correct them over time by doing the form nice and slow. Remember, with repetition, you can correct your form and make it better and more efficient. I hope you guys like the video today. If you have any questions, please leave your comment in the section below. I'll see you guys next week.